Hello there, this video will cover some basic network tips in Linux. This will include checking for internet connectivity, scanning your local network, scanning ports, transferring files over a network, and finally I will show a few ways we can research a website. These topics will be applicable for all devices ranging from PCs, Chromebooks, and Androids. This is a media blitz format that will allow me to share topics faster and keep pace with frequently updated topics. My channel focuses on adding the power of Linux to your Android, Chromebook, or PC without the need to root or remove your system. Additionally, I cover cross-platform topics. My playlists are available from the homepage on my YouTube channel and are organized by operating system and cross-platform topics. To make it easier to follow along with my videos, I include the full written instructions in the pinned comment. So if you scroll down to the comments of the current video you are watching now, you will see the top pinned comment containing the written instructions. To see the whole comment, click on Read More. Any updates will be noted at the top of the pinned comment. Note that you can copy and paste the notes into a text file like I have here with the mousepad text editor. Or, if you're feeling fancy, we can copy and paste the notes into a tiddlywinky notebook, also known as Flexible Offline Searchable Notes. Here, I pressed the backtick key from the top left of the keyboard so that there are three backticks before and after the text. This will apply monospaced block formatting. Keep in mind that you can modify the notes however you'd like, whether that's formatting, adding images, or changing what's in the notes. For more information on TiddlyWiki, I recommend watching my TiddlyWiki videos. That concludes the intro, now onward to the video. First, I'm going to give a general idea of how data is transmitted across the internet. On the internet, data is transmitted in packets. Packets use IP addresses and MAC addresses to navigate to the correct device. The device then uses ports to route the data to the correct program slash process. So we can think of an IP address as a street name, which points to the local network, and the MAC address is like the street address, which refers to the device itself. Finally, the port number is kind of like an apartment number, which again is what the device uses to route data to the correct process. Now that we have a general understanding of how data is transmitted through the internet, we can get into the network tips. Here I have listed the installs for the commands we will be using. First we have iputils-ping which will give us the ping command. After that we have netcat-openbsd which will give us the nc command. Then from there we have net-tools which will give us multiple commands that we can use which for this video we will just be using the ifconfig command. Next, we have the iproute2 package, which again has multiple commands, which for our purposes we will just be using the ss command. After that, we have nmap, which will give us the nmap command. Then we have bind9-dnsutils, which will give us the dig command. Then after that, we have whois, which will give us the whois command. Then finally, we have traceroute, which will give us the traceroute command. Now I'm going to show how to check for internet connectivity from a terminal. To see if we are connected to the internet through a terminal, we can execute ping space google.com. After we execute the command, if we get a continuous output, then that means we are connected to the internet. To stop the ping, we can do control C on our keyboard. If there was no continuous output, then that means the device is not connected to the internet. Next, I am going to show how to scan your local network. To do that, we first need to know our device's IP address. More specifically, we need the IPv4 address. An IPv4 address has four numbers separated by dots. This identifies a device connected to a network. These IP addresses typically start with 192.168. The first three numbers in an IPv4 address represent the network address, and the last number represents the device's address. To find the IP address of a Chromebook, we can open Chromebook Settings, and from the list on the left side, we can click on Network, and under Network, we can click on Wi-Fi, then from here we can click on the Wi-Fi network that we are connected to, and from here we can see the IP address. To find the IP address of an Android, we can open up Android Settings. From Android Settings, we can scroll down and click on About, 
Then from about, we can scroll down until we see the IP address. Now to find the IP address of a PC, we can open up Conman Settings, click on Wireless, then click the gear icon to the right of the Wi-Fi network we are connected to, and from the window that comes up, we can see the IPv4 address. Alternatively, we can find the IP address of a PC by using a terminal. One of the commands we can execute to find the IP address is IP space A. Here we can see the IP address is listed in the output. Another command we can use to find the IP address on a PC is sudo space if config. Since we are using sudo, we will need to type in our password, and after that we can see our IP address. Now that we know our device's IP address, we can scan our local network. To scan our local network, we can execute nmap space the first three numbers of our IP address dot asterisk space dash unprivileged. This will scan for all the devices that are connected to our network. Note that this command will work on everything, so we can execute this command on PCs, Chromebooks, and Androids. Scanning a network like this can be useful for finding another device, finding a printer so that we can access a printer's embedded web server, and so on. This can also potentially show if there's an uninvited guest connected to our network unless they're in stealth mode, in which case we won't see the device. When Nmap is done, we will see a list of all the devices connected to our network. Each device will start with Nmap Scan Report 4 followed by the device's IP address. For this example, I have two devices listed. Another way we can use Nmap to scan for devices connected to our local network is by executing Nmap space dash capital A space dash capital T for space the first three numbers of our IP address dot asterisk. Keep in mind, this command will not work on Android devices. Again, like before, when Nmap is done, we will get a list of devices connected to our network. Each device will start with Nmap Scan Report 4 followed by the IP address. And like last time, I have two devices listed. Next, I am going to show how to scan for ports. To scan for ports, we will be using the ss command and the nc command. Note that the ss command will not work on Android. In order to get more out of the output for the ss command, I had the Firefox browser open. Now for our first ss command, we will execute ss space dash t l u n p. This will display listening sockets and any processes using those sockets, if any. Sockets contain an IP address and a port number. Note that each letter after the dash represents an option. For more information, we can execute man space ss. This will give us more detailed documentation for each option. For our next ss command, we will execute ss space dash t a u n p. This will display connected sockets. After that, for our last ss command, we will execute ss space dash t u n p. This command will display established sockets. Another command we can use for scanning ports is the nc command. nc stands for netcat. Note that the netcat command will work on Android. With the netcat command, we can scan the ports on the device we are currently using by executing nc space dash znv space 127.0.0.1 space 1 dash 8080 space 2 greater than symbol ampersand 1 space pipe space grep space cc. 127.0.0.1 represents the device we are using. So this nc command scans the ports 1 to 8080 on the device we are using. Like with the ss command, each of the three letters after the dash represent an option. To get more information about what each option means, we can do man space nc. When the command is done, we will get a list of ports that are listening. Note that the grep command at the end of the line we executed filters through the output of the nc command, so we only get the lines that say the connection succeeded. 
In addition to this, we can scan the ports from a remote system that is connected to the same network. For this example, I'm going to be scanning the ports from another Chromebook that is connected to the same network. To do that, I'm first going to open port 8080 on the other Chromebook by opening Chromebook settings. And from the list on the left side, I'm going to click on About Chrome OS. Then from About Chrome OS, under Developers, I'm going to click on Linux Development Environment. And then I'm going to click on Port Forwarding. From here, I'm going to open port 8080 by clicking on the Add button. Then for the port number, I'm going to type in 8080. And once I've done that, I'm going to click on the Add button. So now port 8080 will be available to other devices that are connected to my network. After that, I'm going to open a terminal in Linux and execute nc space dash l space dash p space 8080. This tells Netcat to listen with port 8080. Now from the device we are using to scan the ports of our remote device, we will execute nc space dash znv space the IP address of the remote device space 1 dash 8080 space 2 greater than ampersand 1 space pipe space grep space cc. This will scan ports 1 through 8080 from the remote device that is connected to the same network. Note this may take a couple of minutes. When Netcat is done, we will see a list of ports that are listening from the remote device. So here we can see the port 8080 I had listening from the remote device is listed in the output. If we want a list of services that are generally associated with ports, we can execute cat space slash etc slash services space pipe space less. To scroll through the list, we can use the up and down arrow keys. Then whenever we are done looking at the list of services that are generally associated with ports, we can press the Q key to exit. Now I'm going to show how to transfer files over a network with the netcat command. For this example, I am going to be sending an image called mypic.png to another device. To send a file to another device that is connected to the same network with Netcat, we first need to let the device that is going to receive the file to expect the file to be sent. To do that, we can execute nc space dash l space dash p space 8080 space greater than space the file name. This will tell the receiving computer to expect a file to be targeted at port 8080, which for my case is mypic.png. For Android devices, I recommend using port 8080. Now from the device that is sending the file, we can execute nc space dash capital N space the IP address of the device that is going to receive the file space 8080 space less than space the file name. This will send the file to port 8080 on the receiving computer. When that's done, we can view the file on the receiving computer. So for my example, I am opening a file manager and I can see my image called mypic.png has been successfully received. Finally, I'm going to cover a few ways that we can research a website or company. One of the commands we can execute to get some more information about a website is dig space the website. For this example, I will be using walmart.com. The dig command will query the IP address of a given website in various ways. Another command we can do is who is space the website. The who is command queries online servers for various information such as contact details, location, and more. For my example, I can see there's a good amount of information available such as the website registrar, an email, a phone number, and if I scroll down a bit, I can see the company is based in the U.S. and that it's more specifically located in the state Arkansas in the city Bentonville. If we were to see little to no information, then that would be a bit of a red flag. One other command we can execute is traceroute space the website. This will show how many hops it takes for information to get to the specified website. An asterisk in the output means there was no response in the timeout limit. If needed, we can do Ctrl-C to stop the command. 
Another way we can research a company is by using various information services. Depending on your location and the company you are researching, the resources you use may be different. For my first example, I am going to use Wikipedia. This can be great for gathering some overall information about a company. Here for my example, when I search for Walmart, I can see the U.S. Arkansas location that was shown in the Who is command matches up with what is shown in Wikipedia. From here, we can also see the website I used for the commands match up. If we were to see that a location or other information didn't match up, or if searching yields no results, then that would be another red flag to keep in mind. Next, I am going to use Manta.com. Here we can search for a company and its location. So I'm going to search for Walmart, and then I'm going to search based on the Arkansas Bentonville location. Again, it's a good sign to see search results and matching information. So again, I can see the location matches up with what I've been seeing, and there's also contact information as well as hours for when it's open. Finally, I'm going to use crunchbase.com, which is another website we can use to search for companies. Once again, I'm going to search for Walmart, and I can see there's a search result for Walmart. From here, I can see the location is still consistent, as well as the website, and if I want to know more, I can scroll down and keep digging. So overall, the main warning signs to look out for when researching a company or a website are if there is a lack of information or if there are inconsistencies on the information that is out there. For documentation on the commands that we used in this video, we can generally do man space the command, which will give us more detailed documentation. For this example, I did man space ping. In addition to that, we can also usually execute the command space dash dash help for a more brief version of the documentation. So for ping, we can do ping space dash dash help. Also, if we want a link to the official website of a specific package, then we can view the package in Synaptic Package Manager. From here, we can usually get a link to an official homepage for the package being viewed. For example, the official homepage link for the ping commands takes me to the GitHub page for ping. Another way we can get the official website for a package is by executing apt space show space the package name. If there's an official website, it will be shown after the word homepage, like so. So here I did apt show IP utils dash ping, and I can see the link to the homepage, which like before will take me to the same official GitHub page for ping. Companion books to my series of videos are available. I will have those linked in the pinned comment. And that's all for this video, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon!